Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with a special video today that I know is going to change a lot of lives out there. Nation, we talk a lot about picking stocks here on the channel, but sometimes I think we're just making it more complicated than it needs to be. It's not just here, but in any investing blog or flip on CNBC, they expect you to hit the ground running like Warren Buffett. It is just too easy to get overwhelmed and end up not starting on that investing journey that's going to set you financially free. In fact, I did a poll of the group last year and found one in five of our Bowtie citizens haven't started investing yet, and half have only just started. We are going to change that right now. I want to get every single one of you started investing and making money. In this video, we'll cover the most important investing questions for beginners at every step of the way to get you started. Every question you have about how to start investing, we're going to cover it here, and then I'm going to tie it all together with a step-by-step -step strategy you can use to make $3,000 a month income on just 15 years of investing and from small investments, so stick around for that. For those of you that have already started investing, it's going to be a great refresher course on the basics that will keep you making money. So I'll leave a clickable index in the description for different sections, but please, you need to understand this entire process. How much should you invest? It's one of the most common questions I get about how to start investing, and the one I think keeps most people from getting started. And the best, but also the worst answer here is just invest what you can. I know it's not the easy answer that you want, but it is the truth. I'm going to show you how to plan your finances around investing next, but there is no set rule for how much to invest. In our step-by-step -step later in the video, I'm going to show you how to turn $150 or $300 a month into $3,000 monthly income, but that's not a rule and might not work for you. Yeah, you're going to hear all kinds of things like invest 10% of your income or, or calculators telling you how much you need to invest, but, but they all leave out one crucial detail. You. Your own income and budget are going to determine how much you can invest each and every month. So you want to figure out what's left in your budget after paying those must-pay expenses. I would recommend starting with investing at least $100 or, or $150 a month, but if you can't do that, start with $50 a month. What's important here, and I probably should have led with this, is just get started investing. You start building that habit of putting your money in stocks, no matter how much it is, whether it's $250 a month or, or $25. Bucks. Because after you've built that habit, then you can worry about whether you're investing enough to meet those goals, but I want you to get into that habit first. Next here, it is critically important that you get ready to invest, and this is something most investors just fail to do. And what I'm talking about here is getting your finances ready to start investing, because folks, it is one of the most heartbreaking things to see, and it happens all the time, but I see people start investing. They're motivated and their portfolio is growing, then something happens and they have to withdraw that money. And this is so demotivating, having to start back at zero. And for a lot of people, they just give up. They never get back to investing and it ruins their financial lives. So I want to give you a few recommendations here to get your finances ready to invest. First is you need at least a month's worth of expenses tucked away in savings. I know most people are going to tell you, you have to have three or six months of expenses. And I'd say three months is a good target, but I don't want you saving forever before you start investing. The important point is that you just have some what if money in savings so you never have to withdraw from your investments. Next is if you can't scratch together at least $150 to invest each month, it's time to take a hard look at your budget and your income. Now that's something most people don't think about, that income side of the equation. Yeah, most people can usually find an extra 50 or so in the budget to invest, but Sometimes you just got to realize you need to make more money. But now as you're planning this out, I do not want you investing everything, every dime, sacrificing everything and being miserable. I fell into that trap in my 20s. I was saving every penny, working two jobs and managing my real estate rentals. I was living on ramen noodles and having zero fun just so I could invest more. And the problem with this is I would burn out every six months or so and just go on a shopping spree. I'd set myself back two steps and it was because I didn't have a plan for what I could realistically invest and still be happy in the now. So take a look at your budget, set an amount to you invest that can get you to your goals, but still leave room to enjoy life. Next, I'm going to show you exactly what to invest in. But folks, the number one reason people fail in their investing plan is because they don't start with a plan right for them. It's why I created a quick three-step guide to making your investing plan. Within five minutes, you'll be able to create an investing plan that makes your goals the motivation to keep investing, and that's customized to your needs. I'll leave the link to that below in the description. It's totally free, just something I wanted to put together for all you out there in the community. So click through, get your step-by-step -step guide now. Folks, I've seen too many investors miss out on the opportunity to make their money work for them, and it's because they didn't have a plan that fit their needs. 
So look for that link and get your free customized plan. Now you're finally ready to start investing, but what do you invest in? You've got the money. What do you put it in for maximum return? And here I'm going to reveal the biggest lie of investing, that it's all about picking stocks. In fact, investing is so much more about that regular amount that you invest in and just watching it grow over 10 or 20 years. So don't stress out so much about picking the right stocks. The very best strategy for your investing dollars, and this is one I use with my own portfolio, is called the core satellite approach. The strategy is called core satellite because you have a core of investments that make up between 60 and 75% of your portfolio. These are in exchange traded funds, ETFs. For example, you might have 15% of your money in the Vanguard Real Estate Fund, ticker VNQ, which holds shares of companies in that real estate sector. Maybe you hold another 10% of your money in the Vanguard Long-Term Bond ETF, ticker BLV, which invests in thousands of bonds and pays a 3.9% dividend. Finally, maybe you hold another 50% of your portfolio in a few funds, like the ProShares S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF. That's the ticker NOBL, a fund of the best dividend stocks in the market. So here, by investing most of your money, that core 60 or 75% in three or five or six funds, you get instant diversification across stocks, bonds, and real estate. Your money is spread out across hundreds of stocks. You've got bonds in that bond fund and cash flow from the real estate fund. Then with that satellite portion of your portfolio, the remaining 25% or so of your money, you invest in individual companies that you really think could produce those higher returns. And the beauty of this core satellite strategy though is that because you only have 25% of your money to invest in those individual stocks, and say you invest in maybe three to 5% of it in each stock, that means you're only picking maybe eight to 10 individual stocks. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna cut in half the amount of time you spend looking for stocks to buy and then following your investments. You don't have to worry about those three or five funds you hold. They're diversified across a group of stocks, bonds, and real estate, so they're gonna be getting that average market return no matter what. Okay, so you have an idea of the stocks you wanna buy, but now where? Which is the best online platform for beginner investors? And there are a million and one investing platforms, but honestly, they're all pretty much the same. There are three things you wanna look for here, and then I'll share which platforms I use. First, you wanna look for an investing site that doesn't charge you to buy stocks. When I started investing in 1999, Brown & Company disrupted the industry by being one of the first low-cost brokers at just $5 a trade, but even that's too much anymore. Most of the major brokers and investing apps have gone commission-free. It's also nice to use a site that lets you invest in fractional shares. That means you can invest any amount of money in any stock, no matter what the stock price is at. You can invest $50 in shares of Amazon, and instead of having to buy a full share for $130, the site's just gonna split up that share and you're gonna get $50 worth. And third here is look for a platform that gives you the investing tools and a research that you need to invest. Now this one isn't nearly as important as the other two and some investors, especially beginners, might not even need any research tools. The trick though, when you're picking where to invest is there is nothing wrong with having more than one investing account. In fact, between retirement and regular accounts, I have nine accounts on six different investing apps. It's free to open an account, and a lot of times, you're gonna get a bonus like free shares or cash when you deposit. Like with Webull, if you use the link, I'll leave in the description below. Another great question I get from beginner investors all the time, how do I start a portfolio? So you've got the money to invest, you have an idea of the stocks and funds you wanna buy, and the investing site. And the question is, do you buy them all at once with just a little in each, or do you invest everything in one stock each month? And here, I would definitely recommend buying all your stocks at once, putting a little bit in each, instead of buying one at a time and then adding to them each month. Now, the reason here, if you buy just one stock a month, putting all of your money into it, there's gonna be a long time where you have a lot of your risk in just one or a few companies. For example, even if you're planning on investing in just 15 stocks and funds, for for six months, you're gonna have all your money in just a handful of them. And that is a huge amount of risk. Think about it. If you got just six stocks, that's 17% of your money in each. Now let's say two of those stocks fall hard on some bad news, each losing a third of their value. Because you had so much in just these two stocks, your portfolio is now down 11%, and that's if all the other stocks are holding steady. But if you had started your portfolio with all 15 stocks, you'd have only about 7% in each. That same drop in two of those stocks would hurt, but your portfolio would only be down about 4% and not nearly the same level of pain. 
And again, this is where using an investing app that allows fractional shares comes in handy because you can invest your money each month across all of your stocks in your portfolio. You don't have to worry about buying at least one share in each. You can invest $150 and have it broken apart in every stock. Okay, we're down to actually investing, putting your money down to buy a stock, and this is gonna be surprisingly easy. I'll show you how to buy a stock on E-Trade here, but the process is almost identical on most apps. We're here in one of my accounts, and let's say I want to buy shares of everyone's favorite, Tesla. Now, if you don't know the abbreviated ticker symbol, you can just type in the company name, and a drop-down is going to show you the ticker. Here on the stock's profile page, you'll see all the basics like price, market cap, the 52-week range of prices, and then across the top, you're going to see a bigger chart, recent news, and options trade. Let's say I've already done my research and I want to buy these shares, so I'm going to click buy over here. This order page is almost identical on any platform. You see the bid price for the shares, which is the highest price an investor in the market is offering to buy those shares. And here the ask price. This is the lowest an investor is willing to sell the shares for in the market right now. Now these two prices get more important if you're options trading because they can be much further apart. For most stocks though, that bid and the ask price is going to be less than a few pennies difference and right around the quoted price for the stock. In this drop down menu, you can buy, sell, sell short, or buy to cover a stock. Now we're going to select buy and then put in how many shares we want. Now if you are on a platform that lets you buy fractional shares, this is probably going to be a dollar amount instead, how much you want to invest rather than having to pick that number of shares. Since we have to buy whole shares here on E-Trade, we're going to divide the investment amount, so let's say $1,000 into the stock price of about a $278 and we can buy three shares of Tesla. For the price type, the majority of the time when you're buying stocks, you can just put in this market order. That's gonna buy the shares immediately at the current market price. Now these other orders like the limit order are more for when there's a large bid ask spread and you need to tell the app at what price you wanna buy the shares. Again though, not really an issue for most stocks. And the platform is automatically gonna show me the total cost of the trade and I'm ready to go. Just two more questions here to start investing before I share that step-by-step -step plan. And this is another really common question for beginners and even those investing for a while. How many stocks should you own? You see, you get these great investing ideas every day online or on TV. It can be very easy to build a portfolio of hundreds of stocks. You just keep investing in everything, but you really don't need to. Research shows that once you get maybe 20 or 30 stocks, your overall return on stocks looks a lot like the average market return because you're so diversified. You've just got a little bit of everything. This is another reason why I like that core satellite strategy. Having those three to five funds gives you all the diversification you need in those asset classes. Then you just pick 10 or maybe 15 stocks of companies that you really like, stocks you think you can do really well. So that strategy spreads your risk out across those funds. Those are gonna give you those market returns, but since you got a little more in that small handful of stocks, you get the opportunity for higher returns yet. Just 10 or 15 stocks for that upside shot if a few of them really take off. Now a question here every investor needs to ask eventually, when should I sell? You've got your stocks, you're investing every month. When do you take those profits and run? And the simple answer would be never. You just hold on to those funds and the 10 to 15 stocks you really like, maybe even 20 stocks, until you retire and start living off your investments. But we all know it's not as easy as that. And even long-term investors sell their stocks. So I wanna give you three problems I watch for in my stocks to know when to sell. First is if there's a scandal or a lawsuit and then no accountability by management. Hey, bad things happen to good companies and even the best run into problems sometimes, but if management doesn't step up and say, this was my fault, here's what I'm gonna to do to fix it, and I'm dumping the shares. Another problem I watch for is if a company is piling on too much debt. I've just seen this become a problem too often in the past. Companies go on an acquisition spree, buying everything they can, and they fund it with mountains of debt. Of course, those acquisitions never go as planned, and the debt payments just become unsustainable. The dividend is cut, and the share price plummets, so I want to be out before that happens. The third signal here is that if a stock price just reaches where I think it should be, Whenever you're investing, you need some kind of an estimate, whether it's from analyst targets or your own, of how much that stock is worth. I wouldn't necessarily sell a stock as soon as it reaches that target, but if it goes much higher, I'm looking for something with a little bit more room to run. You've got that roadmap to start investing, and be sure to ask any questions you still have in the comments below. I want to make sure you're set to start making money. Now, I want to reveal the step-by-step -step strategy to start investing and how just 15 years of investing small amounts 
can give you the extra 3,000 or more each month from your investments. Now understand, this is just a general plan. I've suggested amounts to invest here so anyone can get started, but if you can invest more, do it, and you're gonna grow your portfolio even faster. And here's that plan. You start this first year investing just $150 a month, following the outline we went through in this video. That first year, you're just getting used to investing, putting your money away and watching it grow. And now I don't want you to get too caught up with the numbers here because the idea is more important for your success. If you can invest more to start, then that's great, but there are a few reasons for starting off slow this first year that I want you to know about. First is I want you to get started with an amount that isn't gonna break your budget. I want you to see that you can still enjoy life while also investing your money. With this plan, starting off slowly and then adding to it every few years, I want you to see how even small amounts can grow to hundreds of thousands of dollars and all you need in retirement. Understand that even when your budget gets tight, any amount is gonna to help to reach your goals. Finally here, and we'll get back to the plan, I want you to start slow and gradually work up to investing larger amounts so you're able to find that point where investing doesn't break the budget. To find that point where you can comfortably invest without having to worry about that emergency expense or just burnout forcing you to sell stocks for cash. So we're starting out slow here this first year and an amount anyone can manage. This second year, we're gonna increase that monthly amount to $300. So you've got a whole year to play with your budget and your income, so you're gonna have that money available. We're gonna be doing this for three years, $300 a month. And this is to build that rock solid habit of investing every single month. Since you've got decades left to invest, most of your investments can still be in stocks here, but don't forget maybe 10% of your money in bonds and 10% in real estate stocks at a minimum. That's gonna give you that max return in these early years and really help your money grow. This is also a runway though. You've got those three years of investing $300 a month, but then we're increasing it to 550 to really start building your wealth. So in that three years, that's the perfect time to start building up your income sources. Maybe start some of the passive income sources we talk about on the channel so you're ready to invest that $550 a month starting in year five. Through this fifth year, you've got an unstoppable habit that is quickly adding up. We've built that portfolio to over $22,000 already and thousands of dollars in profits, and it's at this point that we really start to see it grow. At that 10% annual return, you're making over two grand just in returns a year, but we're not finished yet. You're gonna do this for five years, and I guarantee after that first year, it's gonna be like second nature. You won't even miss that $550 a month. By year 10 here, you've got almost $80,000 in your investments. That's gonna be $8,000 a year in profits, and we're gonna do the last increase here. For the next six years, through year 15, you're gonna invest $650 a month. Stick with it, find the cash to invest because this is the last five years you're gonna have to put that money away. After year 15, that's it. Keep that money invested, but now you've got another $650 a month to enjoy life. And in 15 years, you'll have a $720,000 portfolio. That's all you need to produce the $3,000 a month income when you retire. And I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Just 15 years of investing. That's all you need to secure a nest egg that is more than three times the national average and produce a $3,000 a month income. Of course, feel free to keep investing. By this time, you'll get to where you love watching your portfolio grow and even cutting back to maybe $300 a month investing, you're still gonna be able to watch it grow and enjoy some extra spending money. And just look at the miracle of all this. After just 15 years of investing, less than the time it took to hit puberty for some of y'all, you've invested $92,400 and we'll see it grow to three quarters of a million dollars, more than 600,000 in profits. That's $720,000. And you can withdraw about 5% of that a year, letting the rest grow. That will produce $36,000 a year, $3,000 a month for the rest of your life. Get your free customized investing plan with the link below or click on the video to the right for the best ways to invest your money, the nine ways to invest and the perfect order for max returns. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.